lot of smiling faces around Major League Baseball this offseason. The hot stove season heated up when some key players signed multi-million dollar contracts amounting in billions spent by owners. Happy players, happy front office, happy agents, smiles everywhere, right, Michael? Yeah, 4% of a lot of money is a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it was a very active offseason. I think um, it went beyond what people expected it to go. Uh, usually it happens the second year after a new CBA, and then the uncertainty of COVID seems to be waning just a bit. And boy, they cashed in. This was a great year to be a free agent. And you kind of brought this up earlier. A new industry standard has been set or created. A lot of these long-term deals, when nobody ever thought we'd see another 10 year deal we see 11 and 12 longer term deals to diminish some of the average annual value and I think also with an understanding as great as some of these players are the teams know that in the final two three four years of those deals they're probably not going to get the best of that player but they're hoping they do get the best of that player for the first seven or eight years all right so obviously a lot of teams feeling very good about their prospects everybody does as opening day uh, comes closer let's talk about winners who do you think were the top winners you guys are winners in my eyes that's <laughs> number one uh, I think the biggest winner is Jacob deGrom and when you look at the way the, the market exploded I think a lot of it is by deGrom for him to get a five-year deal I mean I love watching Jacob deGrom pitch he's one of the best pitchers I've ever seen can't stay on the mound I mean, you're going to get, what, 10, 15 starts out of him? And he cashed that kind of check? A five-year guaranteed deal from the Texas Rangers? That's the biggest winner. And because of him, everybody else fell on the line. That's why Verlander got he, what he got from the Mets. It probably ticked off Steve Cohen that... Uh, that DeGrom got this kind of money. Nobody thought he was going to get that kind of money in those type of years, so that's my winner. Who will DeGrom be in years four and five? It yeah. goes back to what I said earlier. How but about my, year one? My biggest, in year one, right, because of what he's done in the last few years. My biggest winner is going back to someone we mentioned earlier. I go back to Aaron Judge. Heading into this season, knowing that free agency was looming, knowing that there was going to be a lot of talk about the fact that he would be 31 years old in the first year of his next contract. He's 6'7", 282. There are no comps out there for a player of his size playing that deep into his career. And what does he do? He has an MVP season. He hits 62 home runs. He puts the Yankees on his back. And then he cashes in with a $360 million contract. All right, let's flip the coin. Losers, not everybody can get a trophy or a lollipop here, Michael. Who you got? You know what? You don't have your kid, the young <laughs> kids, because everybody gets a trophy or a lollipop. Uh, I think the Red Sox turned out to be big losers. You know, they lost Andrew Bogarts. That was their original plan. They wanted to sign him back, and then the market exploded, and the San Diego Padres gave him a 12 year deal, which is absolutely ridiculous, way beyond what the Red Sox thought. Now, the Red Sox thought they had an ace in the hole, though, in Trevor Story, and now he's going to have to essentially have Tommy John surgery. They spent way more more money for Matasaka Yoshida than anybody thought they were going to spend. Uh, then they had to spend so much money on Devers because they couldn't lose him and, you know, lose Bogarts to the fans' favorite. So I think their plan, whatever they had, it, it just fell apart during the offseason. And they, they looked as if they were chasing their tail at the end. And they gave money that they didn't want to give. And they lost players that they didn't want to lose. I don't you? love the word loser, Bob. But I'm going to go with sort of left out with the Baltimore Orioles. They won 83 games last season. They got their fan base excited again. Their general manager talked about how heading into the offseason, he was going to have more money to invest than he had in any time of his stewardship. It's Mike Elias. And then they didn't do anything. They added three players in Frazier, Gibson, and Givens, all on one-year deals. They almost were sending the message that we're not sure if those 83 wins were legit or a little bit hollow. We might not be ready, so we're not going to do that much. Because if you won 83 last year and you get into the high 80s and close to 90 in this year, you could get to the postseason. So a non-winner, not a, a non-winner. All right.